we now live in a time when that's all people want are emotions. All people want to see on a screen is someone crying. I've never seen so many thoughts go on behind someone's eyes. Gratitude. Appreciation. I think it's because we'd grown up with it, with the family, and we had so much awareness of them. And they, they'd been part of our lives, whether you wanted them to be a, a part or not. They've been with us our whole lives. I wasn't someone who you know, chased royal magazines or wanted to do any, any of that at all. And so we've come at it from quite a serious point of view through our research and watching the documentaries and working on speech and movement rather than being, oh, oh, I, you know, I, oh, I loved it, I loved it, I'm, I'm now in it. I think we're probably a bit too old for that. I felt that this portrayal, I didn't feel like an outsider. I felt that the royal family belongs to me. I don't think it's my behavior that's threatening its survival. We know what the public faces because we can watch any number of documentaries, footage, and see them all having their public life. The private life is what's interesting, and they're people. It's a really good discipline to hold things back, and also I think these people are attached to another era where people, particularly in Britain, stiff upper lip, don't show your emotions. We now live in a time when that's all people want, are emotions. All people want to see on the screen is someone crying. And here are people who just go, right, this is a terribly difficult situation. I don't need to share my innermost angst with you because that's for me to sort out privately. So, and I love that sort of control and ability to try and process it out of the limelight. It's a system, for better or for worse. This season sees Margaret uh, older, obviously, and entering a kind of quieter with a small Q stage of her life and a lonely part of her life. She was quite lonely by the time she reached her 60s. She was without a husband or a partner. And, you know, although she has all of those enormous, enormous privileges in her life, as we all know, a, a, a human heart can be broken, whether you're aristocracy, royalty, or any class. It's it's about hearts and, and souls and minds. Without sun and water, crops fail. Imelda and I are very old friends. We go back a long way and we're proper friends. And so playing sisters, that side of it had an ease to it, you know. This might sound corny, but I think that she has many qualities that the Queen had. The Queen was a formidable woman who diligently did her job and was committed to it. And Imelda has that work ethic. She's got a great sense of humour and you're always guaranteed that you can have a bit of a laugh with her. And I get the feeling the Queen was like that too. I don't know, I might be wrong, I might be romanticising what our dear Queen was like, but everyone I know who knew her a little bit just said, you know, she was very funny and she, she had that little twinkle about her. 